Beta blockers are great for a number of reasons. So in this video, I'll be giving you seven things that you need to know if you are or will be taking beta blockers. Come in right now. Hey y'all, Amen here, and you're watching Heart Limits. Now, let's just jump straight into this, alright? So the number one thing that you need to know is that a beta blocker is prescribed for various reasons. And normally, it is for conditions of the cardiovascular system, you know, something that has to do with the heart. So let's say like heart failure, angina, abnormal heart rhythms, you have heart attacks, and hypertension. But to be honest, it isn't limited to conditions of the cardiovascular system. It can also be for glycoma, migraines, anxiety, certain tremors, and even hyperthyroidism. Number two, it is important that you stick to the beta blocker brand that you are prescribed with if possible. And to be honest, there are many types of beta blocker brands. But in general, they all in some way block the impulses that cause an arrhythmia and the effects of adrenaline on your body's beta receptors, which technically makes your heart work less because it needs less blood and oxygen. So as a result, it makes your heart beat slower. It reduces your blood pressure. It helps blood vessels open up and also technically it improves blood circulation. But the thing is, you have to be aware that some beta blockers are selective and some are non-selective. Selective in the way that it blocks beta 1 more than 2 and non-selective is that they basically block beta 1 and 2 equally. So beta 1 is those which are connected with your heart and kidney. And beta 2 is that which is connected to the muscles that you technically have no control over. So, given that there are some differences on which beta this beta blocker is blocking, I have to say it's important that you stick to what's prescribed to you or else, to be honest, there might be some certain reactions that you might not expect to arise even though in your mind, you might think the drug is the same. Number three is that you should be prepared to increase dosages to the maximum level. Since apparently, and to be honest, I wasn't told this to begin with, the goal is to actually reach the maximum dosage. So, you have to be prepared for that. The pace of increasing the dose depends on how you respond to the drug, and the maximum dose depends on your doctor, and to be honest, the country. And in my case, I was prescribed Cardenciel, a type of bisoprolol. began with 1.25 milligrams, which then became 2.5. And since I'm in France, they're saying that the maximum is 5 milligrams. But when I looked online, in some parts of the globe, it's at 10 milligrams, and at some, it's at 20 milligrams. So I guess it really depends geographically speaking and all of this. So the thing is, the way that they increase this, this type of beta blocker is actually dependent on how your body reacts and responds to it. So there are certain paces on how they do it. So if you usually you know, respond well to a drug, as far as I know, the fastest way that they increase the dosage is every two weeks. But of course, there are also instances where you have certain complications. So in the end, the doctor will try to reduce the dose or change the drug. And to be honest, there's a couple of certain reactions or you could say, you know, those side effects that you can have depending on a certain beta blocker. So the common side effects are, you know, you'll have cold feet and hands, you have some form of fatigue, nausea, weakness, dizziness, you know, dryness of the mouth, skin or eyes. You can have this like irregular heartbeats. You can even have weight gain. But some of which which are uncommon is that you can have sleep difficulties, abdominal cramps, you can have constipation, depression, memory loss, confusion, back or joint pain. And sad to say, there's also this thing where 
you can actually have a loss for the sexual drive which applies to all sexes and for men which kind of freaked me out the first time I took the drug is that you can actually also have some form of erectile dysfunction so it's very important that you keep these in mind and you know be prepared that when you start taking the drug you know hopefully you don't have these complications but the cool thing is there are other drugs or other brands of technically beta blockers that you can consume so be open to the idea and let your doctor know because they can technically adjust the doses or change the drug if ever you are you know having some certain types of reactions or side effects all right number four is that there are certain conditions that complicate or worsen due to the consumption of better blockers so be aware that if ever you have asthma bronchospasm you know a slow starting heart rate an uncontrolled heart failure being diabetic or you plan on getting pregnant taking better blockers actually has an impact to these scenarios and they can make the situation worse or even complicate matters more so it's important that if you have any of these conditions that I mentioned you let your doctor know because there's a possibility that he might change a drug or even change the process of treatment so keep that in mind number five is I believe one of the most important ones and that is that you cannot double dose miss or just suddenly stop taking a better blocker to be honest it's technically a lifetime commitment suddenly stopping can lead to a heart attack increased hypertension and anxiety thyroid storm you know if you're prescribed hyperthyroidism and even sudden cardiac arrest so be careful and try your best to create a plan on how you can ensure yourself you know to always take the medicine at the right time and if ever there's a scenario where you know you kind of remember the day after oh yeah I need to take the medicine you know try to make sure that you don't double dose because once you double dose it's actually quite complicated so in those instances call your doctor and let him decide you know what you are supposed to do because as you know these are quite powerful drugs so uh, even the idea of just stopping it can technically kill you so think twice if about you know double dosing suddenly stopping or anything that you plan on doing differently with this drug all right number six is that you have to be aware that your target heart rate you know if you train using heart rate zones changes especially when you are on better blockers and there is a possibility that to be honest that it might not be possible for you to reach your target heart rate and this is because of the effects of the beta blocker but it doesn't mean that you aren't getting the cardiovascular benefits from the exercise so it's important that you take an exercise stress test to measure how hard your heart pumps while you're on beta blockers or you know you can technically do it yourself and you know just figure it out and see that if you know you have a hard time while you're exercising talking technically already kind of shows that you know you're overdoing the exercise so try to stay within those bounds so that you don't you know hurt yourself at least all right and lastly number seven now there are certain things that if you consume you know kind of affects how well a beta blocker works and some of which is caffeinated food and drinks anything with aluminum so let's say for instance you have cough and cold medications antihistamines and antacids and also alcohol now it's great if you can totally avoid these things but if possible try your best to lessen the consumption of such all right so once again amen here and you're watching heart limits so remember Beta blockers are very, very powerful drugs. So be careful when you take them. And if you have any complications, don't forget to talk to your doctor. All right? So, once again, 